Hey guys, welcome to the Seaman Crunch. And I'm losing my mind. So I just want to loop everyone in on what's going on with SEMA. This video will probably come out after SEMA or during. We'll probably post it during. Makes sense. Because a lot of these projects are special hush hush projects. Let's get you guys up to date on what we've been doing so far and what's left and if we're going to make it and if we're not. And if we're not going to make it, you probably won't show up. So one of the projects we worked on was for off the line performance in their Toyota 8.6. So for this car, they wanted to go with a classic TRD theme and they kind of gave us the free range to really do whatever we wanted with it. So when we looked at the housings after we took them apart, kind of planned out what we wanted to do, we thought that a TRD paint scheme would be, oh my God, we're filming, what do you want? So after opening the headlights up, we thought it'd be really cool to go with a classic TRD paint scheme, which is their red, orange, yellow stripe, and then we wanted to do black around it. The customer at Off The Line wanted to do a TRD logo instead of the 8.6 on the side, so we had to sand that down smooth, and then we painted a cool like charcoal gray. We mixed actually DGM, a Subaru color, and silver together, and painted that, masked it off with a TRD logo, and then painted black over top. And for black, we used black base coat, and then I actually added some of that same uh, DGM silver combo to see if we had a little bit of a flake in the paint. So when we were trying to figure out what colors the TRD logo was, everything that we found was the vinyl color, and not actually the paint code. So we asked the computer if it could give us a paint code. It said no. We went to our friends at Rochester Leadworks and they said yes. So we were able to get the colors pretty dead on. They look awesome and they came out exactly how we wanted them to. Past that, we wanted to do the off the line performance etching on the projector. Uh, that came out awesome. Shane here I've set up for us. The other part that they wanted to do was like crispy, Chris, his acrylic tubes that we did for SEMA in 2019. So for those, we were trying to figure out the best way to do that. Usually we would do an acrylic backing plate and then drill those or laser cut the holes and then put the acrylic through. But because these are three dimensional, there was really no great way to do that unless we wanted to like 3D print or something. It just seemed like a little more work than was really, it, it was just too much. To keep it simple, we actually just drilled out the factory plastic where the LEDs would normally sit to a half inch and that's where we used our acrylic rod. When we looked at the acrylic rod in the clear plastic, it just looked like a little bit, it was hard to differentiate like what was the rod, what wasn't. It just was all clear plastic. So we wanted to add some color to that, darken it a bit. But if I were to paint that, the paint might be a little too thick for the holes that we drill. And then on top of that, the paint might also, because we would add clear coat over top, it could kill some of the details, and like the curves in that uh, plastic part. So we wanted to just try to keep it as light as possible. So I actually tried to dye the plastic, which was a, a new venture for us. I've never done that before. Uh, we gave it a shot with dye and hot water and it didn't stick at all. It just turned out like pink. Um, but a little bit more research online, we needed to add a carrier. So we actually used IPA 90% with the dye mix and it looks awesome. The first dip, a huge difference. It looked like a light smoke. And as we added thyme and dye into the mixture, it actually turned to like a, like a very, very dark, like red burgundy black kind of color. So if you're looking at it just with the lights off, it looks totally black. The lights are on, you can catch like a little hint of like burgundy, which I think looks really cool with the TRD colors. It kind of matches the whole theme. So it looks really clean now, you guys will see it. Uh, those have show mode, they're full sequential. We also, on the very ends of three of the top rods, we have the TRD and the, uh, the same font as the TRD logo. And then we also did the OTL for off the line performance at the end of those. So very cool set, lots of details involved, lots of paint work, and then the acrylic looks incredible. Uh, we topped it off the Diodynamics Demon Eye to just give the etching a little bit of a standout. And uh, yeah, these, these look very clean, very on theme for the car, and, and we're excited to see it on the car. Unique. The other project we're working on 
done for Sema is for Live to Offend, which is if you guys follow the Kaiza on Instagram. He does really awesome render work, 3D stuff, animation. It's incredible. We've always been a big fan of him here at the shop. When Live to Offend reached out to us, Eric was very adamant that he wanted some very cool lights for this car that they're debuting. It's their E36 wide body kit. Uh, as well as some other stuff we're working on for them. So very excited for that. The hard part was a lot of the things that they wanted are things that we haven't done before, but we were very on board to try to figure that out with them. We took an E36 light. So we first took this and turned it into what Kaisel rendered, which is crazy and fun to do. So let me show you kind of what made this headlight doable here. So we knew that we needed to add different projectors right off the bat. We knew that we needed to do that, which we do fairly often. So we went to uh, Old Reliable, Jake Whiting. He used to work here. He does a lot of our uh, CAD design stuff for bracketry and stuff like that. So he came up with these backing plates. Um, the weird thing, we were gonna replace all of this, which is fairly common for what we do. But the hard part is these have like a machining stamp and each of these little hex stamps hold the adjuster so you can adjust the, the headlight up and down, left and right. So I, I wasn't really sure how we are gonna be able to tool something like that in like a whole new bracket. And then on top of that, these little slits here, these are also like angled in certain spots to lock the adjuster in. So with the timeline as well as like a lot of these like kind of specialty markings, we just thought it would be easier just to create the brackets to replace the two from the factory so so the high beam one we just took that out uh traced it pretty much and then added these and then we're gonna uh take these in we're gonna have um matt at boosted creations here in palmyra take those in for us uh on top of that they are they, they do press over this so that'll hold it in place just like the factory ones did and then for the low beam the low beam is a little bit different the factory ones it kind of kind of recesses back and as you can see it's like a bit of a weird angle uh but for this project and the projector we wanted to sit flush up here so this is also going to be uh tigged in and then we're going to have hardware that is uh, welded on the back so it'll hold it in place so it'll be very sturdy very robust and those will hold the projectors that'll be for the low and high beam as far as what projectors we're going to use for this project we were going to do an h1 hid low beam and then the hb morimoto high beam uh, we wanted to do all led though we kind of made that decision later in the game so we're going to be, be still using the HB high beam for the high beam location and then we're actually going to use the Morimoto MLED 2.0 for the low beam. Uh, this will give the car full LED, there won't be like ballast hanging out, there's a lot of room in the backing of the headlight. So there's a bunch of room for the projector as well as the projector driver for the LED projector. And I think it'll just give it an overall clean look. The uh, the Kelvin rating for both are very similar, so it's gonna look awesome together as a pairing. So once we had the backings made up and we have them 3D printed out just to kind of test fit, these are gonna be cut out of steel, so we can weld them in as well as um, we're gonna paint them black so you can't really see them sitting back there. So next up, we they wanted the hexagon shape with like a clear diffuser on the top. We've done a lot of acrylic work in the past, so I know that that was the material I wanted to use. We could have printed it, but I really just don't like the machining lines. And then on top of that, with, with clear, we were gonna need to do some sort of acrylic. And typically that's laser cut for us, so it's like two dimensional. But we wanted this to have like more of that three dimensional shape. So we reached out to uh, Derek and Bailey at Arcadia Industries. And they have a CNC machine. They do like all their, like, they do crazy like aerospace stuff with titanium and all that. So. Uh, plastic was a breeze for them to do. So this is just the render we have here. We are expecting those to be cut and then vapor polished and have those next week. So we'll be able to show you guys that before we put them together. So these are gonna fit right around each projector, low and high beam, and those will have LEDs in them as well as a clear diffuser over the top. And like I said, with the vapor polish, they're just gonna be super transparent, look like glass, and uh, the backing will be black here. So it kind of match the overall theme with it. Uh, the last part that was a little bit out of our wheelhouse, we do 3D printing, like stuff like this for a prototype, but we normally don't do that for like a finished product. So we know that the shroud around it, the design that Kaisel created, wasn't one that was on the market currently. And on top of that, because we do have to recess the projectors so far back in these, I think the MLED, like on the, the low beam, is gonna probably sit like around that 
and there's a lot of room in the backing, so that's not a problem. But we needed a really, really shallow shroud. So I actually put a feeler out to the Rochester Institute of Technology Car Club Facebook page, and had a few people reach out, but Cam Slunker hit us up. Uh, he's got an Outback XT, which is awesome. And he got right to work, so he was able to create really exactly what Kaisel and, and Eric were looking for, as, it, as well as what we kind of needed to fit these projectors. So this will also be recessed back. This shroud will sit on this backing plate, and then the hexagon will go right around it. So it fits really, really nice. Once it's pushed into place, it really doesn't push forward that much at all. So it's kind of like a press to fit. And then that'll sit right there with the acrylic protruding from there. And that'll be for low and high beam. So we are currently printing these off in the final iteration in this beautiful BASF Ultrafuse PAHTCF15, which uh, is very good for as far as thermal wear and tear, just making sure like the heat from the LEDs and the projector don't warp or melt this over time. So that is a new filament for us. I've never used it. I've just used PLA for prototyping stuff. Uh, we tried to use a glass. I think it was CC plus GS30. I don't really know. Uh, that didn't work. It, it, it warped like on the bed as it was printing uh, because we are these just have higher heat necessities for printing. I don't really know what I'm talking about. You can see I, we, we really just use this for prototype stuff, but uh, Cam helped me out with that. He came over last night, set it all up. The print's coming out awesome now after the first one didn't, didn't do great, but uh, this one's looking awesome. So very excited to have these done. We're gonna have, like I said, four of these. We're printing two right now. And then I think we're expecting to have these backings in metal next week, probably mid next week. The hexagons we'll probably have mid next week. And then these we're hoping to have done by the weekend or before the weekend. So these we'll just have to sand, get ready for uh, and filler if we need to do that at all and paint them. And the other stuff should be ready to go. So we'll, uh, we'll give you guys an update where we land on those and uh, hopefully all goes well.